say it's the early bird that gets the worm, but we're not serving worms this morning. But we are serving the wonderful Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. And before I get started and, and start teaching, preaching, praying, prophesying, singing, jumping, leaping, what, what I would like to do is there is anyone here this morning that you're having a challenge with any area of your body. You're sick, oppressed, suppressed, repressed, depressed, or possibly possessed. That if you would just take just a moment and stand to your feet, let's tend to that before we tend to anything else right now. Father, we thank you right now that the word of the Lord God has the power to perform itself. I speak to these bodies. I speak to these men and women. And I remind you, devil, you are old and ugly and you are defeated. You have no power or authority except what the church gives you. And we are standing here in the place of Jesus Christ, standing in his stead, administrating the estate of God from the revelation of the finished work of Calvary. And Lord God, I thank you for every second the enemy would oppress the flesh of these men and women that are standing here. Oppress their finances, oppress their joy, oppress their life, oppress their families in any way. I claim a soul for every second that you try to stay on their body. I thank you that sickness, death, doom, and destruction has no power or authority. So we take authority over it in Jesus' name. I see your faith beginning to arise. Get up and not wait for God to fall on you, but you begin to activate that and say, that's me. That's me. For every second, for every second you've been oppressed, I claim a soul for the kingdom of God. Father, I reverse the curse that's trying to come and torment God's people. Father, I thank you in this hour. If you will lay hands upon your own body where you are having the opportunity to overcome and begin to agree with the word of God and say, devil, you've made your worst mistake. You've just made your worst mistake. You see, once the word has been released, uh, I found out that my automobile, as nice as it is, without gasoline, it's not going anywhere. I can sit in it and I can roll the windows up and down, I can listen to the radio, but as far as what it was created for, to be able to get me from one place to the next, I have to have the fuel. And the fuel that's gonna make you run is the faith of God, not just the faith in God, but the faith of God, because the word of God says, it is no longer I who live, but it is Christ that lives, and the life that I live in my flesh, I live it through the faith of the Son of God. So it's the faith of the Son of God that is inside of you. Are you understanding what I'm saying to you? So right now, you need to make a decision that every report that has come upon you, anything any doctor has said, any person has said, you are blessed from the top of your head to the soles of your feet. You are not, uh, you're not ordinary, you're extraordinary. And take the word of God. Do not get addicted to ordinary. Do not get addicted to say, oh, I've heard this before. Regardless of how many times you've heard it, you have to make it yours by the reason of use. You understand, you have to activate it. Once I go and I, I put gasoline in my car, I have to pay a price for it. Nobody wants to give it away. But God says it's free. It's free, it's free, it's free. You begin to take the faith of God and begin to say, devil, I want to tell you something. The hole you dug for me, I'm fixing to put you into it. Whatever is on your body, you begin to say, now, may the angel of the Lord pursue you, Satan on a dark and slippery path. We remind you. We remind you that Jesus has defeated you. I have the keys. I have the keys. Tiki laki, tiki laki, tiki laki. And we have the keys. Not a key. We have the keys. We have healing and deliverance and prosperity and joy and peace and love and life. We don't have enough adjectives to describe all the things that God has provided. And mukoba hasikiridia, turba kasikiridia. We talk about 175 million or 175 billion or 175 trillion. We are here to say we are on the increase. Begin to say say that's mine that's mine divine health is mine divine health you just got through singing I'm not gonna die I'm gonna live it's against the law to die so don't plan on it father in Jesus name awaken us to our destiny and all the people said amen <laughs> praise God give the Lord a shout <laughs> hallelujah you, <laughs> I, I just think it's wonderful if you have a shout it's got some clout you know that uh, I hear some people shout, oh, hallelujah, what's it to you? You know, it's a, uh, without passion, there's no power to perform. Am I making sense? You've got, and you say, well, I just, 
I, I know all this. And I said, well, knowledge of a thing is not possession of it. Uh, on my honeymoon, my husband was a ski instructor, and, and I live in Louisiana, and he lived in Denver, and he told me, and I believed it, that, that Colorado was wonderful. Well, I'd never been in that kind of cold, and I'm used to a lot of humidity, and we went skiing. It was the most miserable experience I ever had in my life. They, they had skis, that, that was back in the days when they were 15 feet long, and that you'd put, put something on like a mad dog biting your ankles off, and and he took me on a rope toe. I don't know if you know what that is, but that's back in, back in, oh my God, help me. And I'm trying to cooperate with his vision. <laughs> a person with an experience is more valuable than a person that only has a doctrine. Now, listen to what I'm saying. So I'm wanting to fit in, but I, this is far beyond anything I'd ever done before. Now, he was a ski instructor that trained Olympians. And here I am, I can't, a bunny trail, I don't know what a bunny trail is, I don't know what a rope toe is. And he said, just grab the rope, honey. <laughs> and it's kind of like I can come in and I say, you're healed, you're delivered, the devil is a liar, you have no power, have no authority. They do what? You know, you hadn't even said good morning. You know, just, I, I learned this from George. We don't have a lot of time. George is my husband. He said, grab that rope. Well, we go going up, 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 up the mountain. I am miserable. Do you hear me? I'm cold. My skin, I'd gone to bed one night looking lovely. Woke up in the morning, all my skin's coming off. You know, it's dry and awful looking here. My lips are parched and I'm holding on. I look like a scared deer in headlights and going up like that. And he says, now when we turn this corner, turn loose the toe. I didn't turn loose. I couldn't turn loose. And we turn it, and I'm hanging over the, the mountain. I mean, hanging on for dear life. There's nothing down like that. And George kept saying, fall, fall. I'm not going to fall. It's not going to happen. It's just, I, I begin to, some of y'all are understanding this. Here, praise God. Some of you are not. But anyway, I was completely out of my depth of understanding. When you have someone that is so experienced, they're so, and they tell you, just believe God, glory to God, and you've got a cancer as big as Arizona that's, that's on you, and the doctor's doing this and doing that, and you're doing everything that you know to do, and you hear this voice, believe God, trust God, hallelujah, that, that you think, I am trusting God. Well, what happened is I, I just sat down, and George says, honey, get up. And I said, I am getting up. And he said, no, you're not. And I said, yeah, I'm getting up. And he said, you're not moving. I said, yeah, but I'm getting up. <laughs> and I started unlashing these things on my feet. And he says, don't take the skis off. You'll never get down. And I said, I'm going to roll down. <laughs> and he said, he said, you can't do it like that. He says, all you've got to do is get up on your feet. And he says, you can, you just, honey, it's easy. And I said, then you do it. You slide on down. But I'm rolling. You hear me? I am. And when I get to the bottom of this thing, never again in God's green earth will I ever be foolish enough to try to think that I can do this. I have no desire. I have no passion. I have no faith. And I do not like you anymore. It's a... <laughs> There, there, there are things in our life, you know, when somebody is telling us, you know, listen, you're not sick, and you think, I'm not sick, okay, I'm not sick over here, um, I'm limping around, everything on me is hurting, it. there's all kind of voices, and they say, you know, by faith, get a hold of this thing. You have to be careful how you hear a thing. You have to understand, Lord God, grant us the ability, those that were here yesterday, I was telling you the story that when I started the first grade, I was an only child, and my, my dad had been overseas, and and while he was overseas, my mother would say, you want to write Daddy a letter? And I'd write him a letter. And Mother would read it to me. And she'd say, dear Daddy, today we did so and so and such and such. And by that, I assumed that I wrote well. And so when I went to school, and the teacher says, we're going to learn the alphabet. And I said, why? And she said, so we can learn how to read and write. And I said, I already know how to do that. And she says, oh, you do? And I said, oh, yeah. And... Uh, I was an only child, and, and my mother and daddy never bought a television. They just put me on the table, and I'd sing and dance. And, you know, so I thought I was a star and thought the teacher should be informed of my incredible abilities. And she said, well, write your name. And I went scribble, 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 and gave it to her. 
And she said, this isn't writing, this is scribble. What? How dare you touch my tradition? And she said, this isn't writing. I said, the problem is you can't read. And so we, we really can be very defensive of the things that we have learned. And then God comes up and brings somebody to challenge everything. And you think, well, you know, I'm not going to do what you're telling me to do. I'm going to continue. So if you want the benefit of the word of God, then you have to embrace change. And the greater the change, the greater the reward. And we're finding out so many amazing things that God is saying, today there is truth that is present for today that was not there yesterday. He's showing us a more excellent way. And so it's not a matter of challenging. I did roll down the mountain. I'm telling you, I did. I rolled down. I looked like a snowball when I finally got there. And George says, honey, don't ever do that again. And I said, you can be assured. I will never do that again. So I learned from that. Don't take people too fast. Amen. But that I needed an experience down on a three-foot hill. I did not need to go to the black slopes, you know, up there and, and think I was going to be able to come down. So there, there is a process of learning. And you have to be careful how you hear a thing. Because he told me how wonderful it was, and he sold it to me before I had an experience. I mean, and from his vantage point, it was wonderful. And I would say, oh, yes, we'll go, ah, down, you know, yodeling in the sun, in the moonlight. I, I mean, it was, but that's not the way it happened. There are, things, there are things that people bring to us, and you think, well, I'm trying what you're trying. I uh, heard this story of this lady, uh, the couple, they'd just been married a year. They loved each other so much, and it was their anniversary. And he said to her, he's getting ready to go to work, and he came in, he gave her the credit card, and he said, sweetheart, you go get anything your little heart desires. Mm, I love you. And she said, and I love you too. So she took the credit card. And what did he say? He go get anything that's in your heart's desire. Sometimes we are in community with people that don't understand that our di desires may be greater than theirs. <laughs> and, and so she took the credit card and she went in and she found this oriental rug for $5,000 that she really liked it. And it didn't fit in the budget, but the husband had said anything your heart's desire. So she's trying to follow his instructions. <laughs> and she tried to call him, she couldn't get him, so she texted him. She says, found the most beautiful rug, $5,000, can I have it? Well, he liked to have a heart attack when he saw it. He was in a meeting and he immediately wrote back, no, price is too high, exclamation, exclamation, exclamation. So. When he got home that evening, there she was with her cute little self, and dinner was cooking, and, and she says, come see, come see. He says, come see what? And she says, come see the rug. He said, you bought that rug? And she said, yes, I got your text. He says, you did, and you bought the rug? And she said, yeah, no price is too high. <laughs> so, We, we are learning some amazing things that um, how to change, how to convert our dreams and our hopes into a, an appropriate goal. We're, you know, so many times we're going to have these incredible, I'm going here and I'm doing this, but we don't know how to get from point A to point Z. And, and you cannot omit B, C, D, E. You know, there's a, there's a progressive learning thing. And so today I would like to be able to t talk to you about how to convert your dreams into realities. Now, the second session is going to be so dynamic, I, I dare you not to go home, because then what, what we're going to learn today is foundational, but then we're going to take them down the mountaintop, and you may need to be around to help broken legs by the time we get on the other side of that. Are you following what I'm saying to you? You're getting the foundation of what's going on because when we talk about dreams, dreams are no more than unrefined hopes. You know, we talk, oh, someday I'm going to do this and someday I'm going to do that. We're making mental assent to things, but we're not making a plan. We're not saying, how do, how do I convert this? Because 
this cost-free aspirations is not going to get me anything because if you desire the benefit, there indeed is a procedure that you're going to have to follow. If you want to heal the sick, raise the dead, cast out devils, there's a process in that that you can think, well, I'm just going to wake up one morning, there'll be this incredible anointing, of the audible voice of God, and 15 angels are going to be singing over me, and I'm going to get a magic wand, and, and then everything I say, and there's no price to be paid. Anytime you see a man or woman of God that are healing the sick, raising the dead, casting out devils, and preaching words that inform and transform your life, you can be assured that they have had an incredible education from God. They have embraced frustration, limitation, agitation, and all kinds of wicked nations have been around. So that, that there's no such thing as an instant man or woman or God. Where we're going in this day and this hour, being able to abide in that secret place of the Most High God is going to cost you some change. You know, because that, that there were things, I was sincere about thinking I could read and write, but I was just sincerely wrong. There are things that you and I have been sincere about in our walk with God, and it's not given us where we, where we desire to be. Am I talking to anybody in here? So you have to be careful how you hear a thing. I have friends, they're pastors, and um, they'd gone by to buy groceries, and they, they had a little tiff going on, a little opportunity to overcome, and they came in, and she asked him, she says, did you get the artichokes? And he looked at her, and he says, well, you ought to choke, too. <laughs> and she said, why would you say such a thing to me that I ought to choke? He says, well, why did you tell me I ought to choke? <laughs> she says, I asked you, did you get the artichokes? And then they had to begin to laugh at it, but the, the reality is we hear things crooked, you know, and so... The, the, the word of God is, be careful how you hear a thing. So when there is a dream and a desire in your heart and God begins to plant things inside of you, you have to know how to activate that and make it become a reality in your life. Would you like to learn some yeah. easy things that will be able to do that? And the scripture that I'm using for this is, with God, all things are possible. And then the other one is, behold, I do a new thing. God's wanting to do something fresh, something that is exciting and igniting. He wants you to be wealthy. He wants you to be, he says, I would above all things that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. God says, I would above everything that you be wealthy, that you not be in debt, that you be debt free. Well, when I began to realize God wants me debt free, I got me two dogs 13, 14 years ago and we named one of them money and the other one debt free. I just... I, I knew I was going to have to start talking the language. You know, if you want the benefit, there's a procedure that is in there. So when you choose a dream, when you choose a dream and you want to pursue in, in the area of your life, let me tell you what has to happen. Your thoughts, your words, and your actions have to line up with the dream, with the vision. Amen? And that you begin to say, I have a vision. The scripture says, without a vision, you're going to die. Without a vision from God, you're just, it, it's... You're not going to do anything. And without a progressive vision, then you're going to dwell carelessly. So we have to awaken to the vision. We have to hear what God is saying to us. I was, uh, after 40 years of pastoring, I said to the Lord, I'm retiring. And the Lord said to me, get ready to learn a new language. And I said, I bind you, devil. It's a... I don't, want to, I don't want to learn a new language. I, I just want to do what I want to do. I mean, there's no need to lie to, to God. You know, oh, Lord, I delight to do thy will. Well, I, I used to say that, and then after I ran around with him for a while, I realized that we, we, where the cross meets is that sometimes he asks things of us that's not just the, oh, I can't wait to do that. You know, that, that it's... <laughs> We're taught that the will of God is so wonderful, but I'm telling you, it's quite contrary to the will of Adam. You know, and you'll think Adam is dead, but you've resurrected him with your words because you you have you you have resurrection life that lives in the depths of you. So when you go around confessing the Adamic nature, and I'm down and I'm out and I'm oppressed, oppressed, and all those negative things, all of hell is saying, "Ah, the sons of God say they're sick. The sons of God say their kids are no good. The sons of God say they've got the yippee ki yays And so you activate. The demonic forces that are, are drawn to mm, unbelief. I just I love go over there and just lay some of it on the church. 
I said, the, the kingdom of God is a kingdom of words, but the kingdom of Satan, he can't do anything until the sons of God speak. He, he's brain dead. He doesn't know anything until you tell him what's going on. Nobody's blowing kisses to me, praise God. <laughs> your dream cannot be a pipe dream. Your, your desire, it can't be just a, a hope. We, our thoughts, our words, and our actions. I like you said that Haman got hung. But th what happens is that we hang the Hamans of our life, the ones that are coming against us, demonic forces, we hang them with the words that we speak. But they get loose from the noose by the words that we speak also. So you have life and death in your mouth. Can you say amen to that? So these things, you say, well, I know about that. You have a thought. The most important thing that you can do is you've you got to get your thought life lined up to agree with God. And then, then what happens is you get a thought, then you get a word, and then you begin to speak your thought. But those thoughts have to be refined through the blood of the Lamb of God. Just because you have a thought, people can say, well, you can't keep the birds from flying over your head, but you can keep them from making a nest in your hair. You know, you, you have a responsibility to keep wicked thoughts out of your head. Amen? Where accusations and fear and dread and doubt, when you say, well, I'm just afraid, I'm just afraid, create with God by calling the things that are not to become the things that are. Am I, am I communicating with you? So you have the privilege, but you also have the responsibility. Responsibility is the ability to respond to the word of God. And God says, you're a head, not a tail. You're above and not beneath. You're blessed. You're empowered. And you're over here saying, I just can't take another day. Well, when, every time you say something negative, things are going down. The economy's going to fail. This is going to happen. You may be seeing facts, but you carry the truth, which is the word of God. You carry the antidote to the Antichrist if you will open your mouth and agree with God. Somebody blow me a kiss. Praise God. Praise God. So we, what you want to do is get this vision inside of you and then say, well, I've got the vision. And the dream has fallen asleep. I thought we were going to be in a different place by this time. I thought this was going to be paid for. I thought this was going to happen. I thought, I thought, I thought. Well, you may have had a vision of that and a dream of that, but you didn't feed it, so that hope is still in your heart. Anybody got some dreams in your heart? And you say, I thought it was going to be this way or that way, but I didn't activate it. So choosing that vision, choosing to say, Lord, I don't want it just to be some empty uh, uh, unrefined hope that's in my life. I need to do something in moving in the direction to see that while I'm alive and kicking that we're going to get some things done. Can you say amen? I've had people say that. I'll give them a prophetic word and they'll say, praise God, that's the 15th time the Lord has told me that. <laughs> and I said, and you're bragging about this? I mean, you know, he says, well, that's a confirmation. That's a confirmation. I've heard that word repeatedly. How many of you know people like that? And they just, they collect prophetic words that say the same thing year after year after year, and they put them in a nice book and say, this is what God has said about me, that I'm to do thus and so and such and such. The reality is, if you've heard it twice, it was one time too many. You know, we need to be able to, the, the purpose of a prophetic word is to confirm to you what God has already spoken to your heart. You don't need to be told 15 times. Can you say amen? So what we're going to do, we are more than able to take the land. Oh, we're just grasshoppers. No, God said go take the land. And you just begin to realize there were just two people out of all, you know, the 12 tribes go over and they, they look and they see what's going on. Big old grapes and then the next thing they see big old giants. What do you see? What's keeping you from being all that God says you already are? We're trying to get in a room we're already in. And God says at some point, get up and begin to say that I am more than a conqueror through Christ. I am more than that. You begin to say, well, I'm, you know, I've had my day and had my say. So I'm telling the Lord, I'm not going to learn a new language. And he said, yeah, you're going to learn a new language and this is what you're going to do and everything. And he began to tell me things that were impossible. This is where I've learned from God with a vision. God never tells you to do what you know to do. He's going to give some big old impossible dream, and you'll think, I can, there's no way I can do that. I don't know anybody that's doing that. And he spoke to me, and he says, uh, after being in the church for 40 years, let me tell you something. You, you, when you, when, 40 is a number that speaks of completed deliverance. And when he says, you're not going this way. 
and you've got all this built up, you've got all these relationships built in, you've got all these, all the people that I had ordained and all the people, you know. And he says, write them a letter and tell them to find somebody else. You're not doing that anymore. Well, I'm cutting my throat. Lord, we're not going to do that. And he says, oh, yeah, we're going to do that. I'll help you write the letter. And um, he said, it's time to do something new. And I said, let me, let's talk about this. <laughs> Have you looked at my birth certificate? I mean, do you know who you're talking to? Did you get me mixed up with somebody else? You know, check your records. At the time he's talking to me, I'm 72 years old. I have not quit. I've gone day and night. I've gone all over the world. I don't want to do this anymore. I'm tired. And he says, and then this is what we're going to do. I mean, I thought, are you deaf? You know, what? have you ever talked to God and just say, are you understanding what I'm saying to you? And uh, no price is too high. Let's, let's talk about this. How do you hear what I'm trying to tell you. I've got five kids and 14 grandkids and I've got this and I've got that and I'm going to cut back and I'm going to do this and I'm going to reduce and I'm going to get rid of stuff and get ready to die. <laughs> he says, and then you're going to go to the marketplace and then I want you to buy this subdivision and then I want you to... And I said, I don't have any money. Have you... Let's talk about that. And he said, we're not talking about money. We're talking about vision. We're talking about vision. It's time to do something that you've never done before. And I said, you wait till I'm half dead, and you're going to tell me <laughs> to get out and to do these things like that? I said, do any of y'all have conversation with God like this? Praise God. And then I have never won an argument. <laughs> never won an argument. Now, I've been faithful to argue. But I've never, never won an argument. And I said, Lord, what do you want? And he says, well, I'm going to send you to the marketplace and you're going to start doing this and this and this. And you're going to write some books. And you're going to, things you put off and things you... We're fixing to complete all of this. And I thought, that sounds like a four-letter word called work. You know, <laughs> and I, I just... Uh, what I had in mind was just... And he says, it doesn't matter. Change your thought life. Change your thought life. And he says, you're not getting older, you're getting better. At last you're smart. Then, and you, re you realize that it's not about you, it's all about me. I'm just looking for a container, not a restrainer. I don't, I'm, I'm bringing you to a place that, that whatever you say. So I said, I do not know how to do this. I don't know how to get from this place to that place. And the Lord reminded me of my honeymoon. He said, you didn't know how to get off that mountain, did you? And he says, you just rolled down the mountain, became a snowball, you know, you just and made all kinds of declarations that you're not going to do this and you're not going to do that. You don't want to embrace something that is new to you, that is uncomfortable to you, that's not the way you see it, not the way you want it. But he says, I'm going to tell you, it's not about you, it's all about me. Okay. So to make an example, goals, when you begin to say, I have this goal, I have this dream, I have this vision, they have to be specific future targets in your life that you can say, we're going in this direction, and we begin to say, oh, Lord God, I'm committed to you to become and to accomplish whatever you say. I delight to do thy will. I had to change my mind about some stuff. And an amazing thing, I went to this meeting, and I was in Mexico, and the, the gentleman that was speaking, everybody loves him. He's Dr. Wonderful. You know, we got Sister Marvelous, and we've got all of these people that do all these uh, accomplishing things. And I had a session, did my session, did well, shook hands, hugged necks, left. And then the guy that is the kingpin comes up and he says, I played golf today. I'm a little tired. You take the evening service. I have no message. I have no notes. I'm not dressed appropriately. I was not prepared for anything like that. And I said, these people came here looking for filet mignon. You want to give them a bowl of cabbage. This is, this is not, it's not good for me. I don't care how good I am. They're going to be disappointed because your face isn't up there. That's who they paid to come see. We're not going to be able to do this. And he just patted me on the shoulder. He said, you'll do well. And left. He didn't introduce me. He didn't say this is 
marvelous and wonderful woman has come and she's going to stand in my place and you're going to be so happy she's here. I'm telling you, I said, Lord, you treat your friends like this. You may not have many. I just, I want you to know how this works. And I said, good evening, everybody. This is Dr. Clarice Floyd, and I'll be standing in for Dr. Wonderful. And uh, you will absolutely be thrilled by what I have to tell you. You've never heard anything like this. No, no, I have a clue. I mean, I am biding time. And then God says, now I got you exactly where I want you. Got you exactly where you're absolutely helpless. You don't have a plan. But now I can fill you with what I have to say. And then I said, so this is the way it's going to be. La, 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 la. I got a standing ovation. They got up. They were so excited about me. And they just forgot about Mr. Wonderful. I mean, it's just, I just, and the Lord says, how's that feel? means you can't take any glory for it. You didn't have anything to do with it. All I needed is a body. You know, I, all I need is just, you know, loan me, become a body glove for God. He said, I don't need a hand. I just need a glove. Amen. I thought, well, yippee ki -yay. But he said, it's hard to find gloves. He says, I have to just beat them up something terrible to get them to the place that they're flexible. And so after this, is met, this gentleman came up to me and he says, I think that you probably are one of the most uh, dynamic speakers I've ever heard. I said, thank you, sir. And he says, no. He says, you have a way of communicating. Your words serve you. He says, it's just, a, I just really, really enjoy it. And I said, thank you so much. And I'm thinking, and the Lord says, don't you take any credit for this. Because you've already, I already proved to you what you had. All the stuff that you count on that you think is going to make you acceptable, I took it away from you. So this is what the deal is. The Lord says, I'm going to convert your vision into reality. He says, I'm going to be specific with this. He says, you're going to do thus and so and such and such. You're going to be really glad about it. So this man is talking to me. And I, I realize that he must be somebody important. And I, he says, you know who I am? And I said, I'm so sorry. I don't. You know, I'm at the wonderful convention. Name brand people. And uh, I said, I'm sorry, I don't. And he said, you ever heard of the Get Motivated Business Seminars? And I said, oh, yes, I've heard of those, you know, where they've got 20,000 people there and they have these big banners all over the place and the speakers of the universe are all there. And he says, I want you on my stage. He says, I need you. And I thought, so I thought, I will go there as an intercessor. You know, I'll get... Certainly I won't be on the stage, but I'll just go there. And I, I said to him, let me just serve you, uh, serve your vision, tell me what you want, and I'll just be an intercessor. And Dr. Tandy said, quit hiding from God. You know, this is what he told you to do. I don't know how to do this. I don't know how to be a motivational speaker. She said, you've been motivating people all the time. Just get on there, act like you know what you're doing. <laughs> That's what faith is about. Now, you get there, and you've got all these speakers, and they'll say, you know, it, we don't know about time limits. Most preachers, it takes them an hour to tell you their name. You know, it's a, and they think it has to be eternal to be immortal. And they said, you got 12 minutes, and this is what we want you to do. La -da 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 -da, and my eyeballs is this big, and they're, I'm at the back of the bus where I'm acclimated. When I say the back of the bus, the, the lesser position, and you see all of these people. I mean, I took a picture with this this gentleman and sent it to my husband and he said, Clarice, do you know who you're standing next to? And I said, he's, he's, he's an athlete. He said, that's Joe Montana. He's won four Super Bowls and everything. And, and he says, I wish I was there. And I said, I, I don't know who, I, I mean, I don't know who's who in the zoo here. So it's a, but in, in the church you come in and you're always the one that's gonna be in charge. You come in, you're at the top of the, you know, how do you do? Nice to meet you, little people. And, and all of this stuff, here's my product, and da-da-da-da-da. We've got all this figured out. George said, I can't believe that you're mixing with these people. He says, do you know who this is? Do you know who that is? And I said, no, I don't know. And Susie Orman was one of the speakers in this. You know, it was just kind of one of those incredible things. And they said, you got 12 minutes. <laughs> and right now... I have two minutes. <laughs> and 
And I went out and I told this silly story about learning how to swim. Got a standing ovation. They loved my Mr. Jack story. And I thought, that's the craziest thing I ever heard in my life. And they, they got all excited. So the owner came in. He says, listen, he says, what I want you to do now, he says, I want you to make an altar call, but you just can't talk about Jesus. <laughs> and you got four minutes. Oh, okay. All right. Be happy to do that. And so I come in and I said, oh, ladies and gentlemen, I'm so excited. I said, we have the opportunity to talk to you about an avenue of revenue to tell you how to have money and how to have success. But I says, if you desire to be happy, I have another opportunity for you that you can invest in today. And I says, it's your relationship with God. Without an active relationship with God, you're never going to be happy. You may be very rich, but you'll never be happy. You will not know why you're created. Who am I? Where am I going? And how are we going to get there? And I says, now, at the end of this time, I have prepared for you. I have a CD in the back. You sign up, and we'll be able to explain to you how you can walk in absolute joy, peace, love, life, and for eternity. I love you with the love of the Lord, and I'll see you back in the back. Like that, and they ran off, and like 700 people. I've never had an altar call in the church with 700 people. What am I talking about today? There's a glass ceiling in your mind that you think you've gone as far as you can go, but God has a plan to use you in the most magnificent, most wonderful way, and God opened these doors to go and, and to... I, all the things that I said I could not do, should not do, and would not do, were, he says, I don't need talents, gifts, and abilities. What I need is a yielded vessel. It is my hope today that I can communicate that no price is too high. Amen. I want to tell you just a little bit about the product that's back in the back, and this is what I want to tell you. Would you please take all this and buy it? And um, <laughs> it will be good for you. It will help you. It will... It will thrill you, chill you, and fill you. It will, God told me to do it, so I did it. I hate selling stuff. I just want you to know that. But back there in the back with Dr. Tandy, all of these things that are available, that, that the Lord said write books. And in a year's time, I think we did 11 books. So I'm, I'm trying to be an obedient disciple, taught of the Lord with great peace and undisturbed composure because when I do what he says, things go well. And when I have another opinion, I mean, it is a mess so God is good, and I want you to know you're not too old, you're not too young, you're not too fat, not too skinny, you're not too black, you're not too white, you just right. God says, I want to use you, not abuse you, but you've got to change your mind and begin to say, with God, all things are possible. Thank you so much for your kind attention. Praise the Lord. Was that a wonderful? That's awesome. Very good. Very, very good. We're going to uh, begin. We do, if you're visiting, you know, we take the half an hour from 20 after to 15, 10 minutes till, and we use it to pray for the nations. We take 20 flags off of the wall, and we, through the course of a year, pray for all of our nations by, by name, each for a month. And we've been doing this almost 15 years now. And we find that every nation we pray for, we eventually go to. And you can be a part of helping us with that. We'll also have the membership class that will be back at Beast Mode through those double doors down the, uh, into the cafe, which you're welcome to enjoy that also. And uh, then service will begin at 11. But through the double doors, through the cafe, down the hallway to the, what would be the corner on the other side of that wall is our Beast Mode Sanctuary where we will do our new members class. Okay, what last thing is, I'm going to ask uh, the uh, ushers to put up a couple uh, offering, some offering buckets here at the stage so that you can sow into Clarice's ministry and to just, get, yeah, go ahead, put them up there. And I would like us to pray and bless her okay, if, and release. How many have been benefited by what you heard? But the Bible teaches us often when we, when we hear from those who bring a spiritual foot, we should minister to them the things of physical uh, things we have and bless and, and so into it. And I know those in the conference have done so, but I want you to have a chance because it's, it's a powerful way of 
sowing seed and changing lives. So, Father in heaven, thank you. Thank you for a living example of your living word that calls us out of our complacency, lifts our head above our situation, and re-engages us in a conversation that we can follow you into our future. We declare that destiny is your dream for everyone, and you have a plan to get us there. And Jesus, you're activating, even now, Holy Spirit, inside of each one of us, awakening and even stirring, and you will encounter us. Father, we thank you for Clarice. We thank you for her willingness to, to be candid, as well as willing to be a trumpet and call forth. And we ask you to bless her. We ask you to bless all that you're giving her to do, all the assignments ahead of her, all the things that you have sent her here to bring and release. We thank you for next service. Lord, we ask you to right now, in the name of Jesus, release us to give as you would lead us. Lord, we would give ourselves first to you, to our, your will for our lives, and then we would give accordingly as you direct in this offering. So thank you. Thank you. We, we declared today as we close this service that we, all of us step out of the limitations that currently we have accepted and into the unlimited resources of heaven and all things are possible to those who believe. We don't know how to fully mature that, but tomorrow morning we're going to start in a conversation and press into prayer and begin to observe you and do you. Whatever we see, we will do. So Lord, grant us grace. Bless Clarice, bless this offering, bless this day in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Bless you.